And welcome back to uh, the Bafamundo Show. It is uh, our privilege this evening to be able to carry on a dialogue with uh, a gentleman who has been and who continues to be a pioneer in the music field, Mr. Robert Fripp. Good evening. <laughs> Mr. Fripp, it's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. For those of you at home, uh, very restfully seated at 8 o'clock this Saturday evening, know for us it's 11.15 on Friday morning. That's right. Wake up. Yes. And we're off. Okay, I'd like to start the questioning. Um, in 1970, you remarked once that, quote, King Crimson is a way of life, it's a very intense thing, unquote. Four years later, when Crimson ceased to exist, you stated, quote, the energies involved in the particular lifestyle of the band and in the music are no longer of value to the way I live. Uh, are, you involved, are you evolving in the direction that you anticipated in 1974? I didn't have anticipations. Uh, I didn't really have expectations. I had no idea what I would do. Hmm. Other than... Uh, and at this moment, I lean forward and look into this camera <laughs> intimately, presuming it to be upon me, although there aren't little lights yeah, flashing. Good <laughs> evening, all you folks out there in Radio Land. Uh, I left King Crimson for a number of reasons. And one way of, of putting that forward would be to say that it was no longer an appropriate form of education, that all the, all the questions which were beginning to arise in that frip were not being were not meeting a response in the rock and roll world in the same way that when I'd been selling houses for my father trainee real estate mm -hmm. uh, in Wimborne in Dorset the questions which were then coming up in that frip weren't being answered by that particular situation so I went from there to music and then obviously I I left music and went on to something else which I thought would be an appropriate form of education. This was the International Academy for Continuous Education at Sherbourne House in Gloucestershire, which took me about a year to wind up my affairs to go there, about a year there and about a year recovering. Uh, so the question is, am I now what I anticipated that I might be, having gone to that? Yes and no that I had no expectations, but I wished to find some practical way of dealing with this idea of being a small mobile intelligent unit. <laughs> and here, here. what I'm doing now would seem to be a more accurate reflection of that notion than what I was doing formerly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you simply <coughs> change, you, you just want to have the freedom to go wherever you feel the questions that arise in this frip can be answered. If no, it be I don't, I, I don't wish the freedom in that sense. I wish to have, from one point of view, absolutely no choice. So what is, is obvious uh, mm -hmm. presents itself to me. Right. Uh, in a sense, having committed myself to this drive to 1981, for you, for those of you at home, you, you find some scant, scant reference to this on this <laughs> poster. This drive to 1981 commits me for two and a half years to be working substantially in the marketplace in positions of public access and accessibility. And having made that decision, I don't really have to worry too much about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the details will be filled in as, as, as the drive continues and so on. But rather than sitting, there, sitting around wondering, is this the life for me? Should I be doing better things and so on? <coughs> All my energies can simply go into this particular campaign. I think the analogy here would be, uh, there's a little story of a Sufi master who says, choice, choice, freedom. I have no choice. I can only do the will of God. This is freedom. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> from one point of view, uh, I would view this drive to 1981 as being a personal discipline. But from a practical point of view, having determined to do it, it, it saves me an awful lot of energy, wondering, should I be doing other things? Yeah. Is this? Mm -hmm.